My name's Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. Love is in the air and February 14th is just around the corner. Every time a holiday comes around, I challenge myself to come up with some budget-friendly ideas for that holiday. So we have some budget-friendly Valentine gifts ideas during this video. I love you, honey. I <laughs> love you too. I don't know about you, but at every holiday, I seem to get a little bit stressed out on what budget I have to create some gifts to give to friends and family. And so what I wanna do is be able to show you guys some ideas on budget-friendly gift ideas where you can really use no power tools at all and be able to create something really unique. There's nothing better than a handmade gift. And if you can do it on a budget and really almost spending no money at all, even better, right? Let's go look at some of our supplies for this video. So I'm going to use two pieces of scrap wood that I personally had leftovers for some projects in our shop, but you can use any size piece of wood for this project. So if you find a scrap around or even a recycled piece, you can really create this in any layout that you want. So don't be discouraged if you don't have a saw to cut. You can also have a hardware store cut a board to size for you if you really wanna go that road as well. We're gonna be using some outdoor pots. These are just left over from some outdoor planting. They're not new. I'm just going to paint them and do something cool with them in the video. I'm going to use some plain white cardstock. You can purchase this at a discount store or even use leftover cards that you already have. I'm just gonna use some cardstock paper and a cute little recycled craft box. This came with a little gift in it. Sometimes I keep these in a box in case we ever have any gifts to give. I'm going to use some vintage printed photos that we have laying around the house. We don't really print as many photos anymore, but I gathered a few to use for this video. And I've been gifted a whole bunch of upcycled yarn someone donated to my art room. And so I'm gonna use these to do something with a card in this video and then also a clothespin. So we're gonna create five different ideas during this video. The first project that we're going to work on in this video is we're going to make a handprint memorial board that's going to say, let love grow, or love grows here. You can change up your font of whatever you want on the top. And we're going to put our family's handprints as a keepsake on this. Not everyone has a significant other, but if you have family members in your family, you could put your handprints on this and keep it forever. I'm wondering how long my boys are going to let me put their handprints on as they get older. And so I'm gonna take advantage of it while I still can. Because we have four people in our family, I'm going to use this longer board that's wide enough to be able to put handprints on. I'm going to stain this first and put my quote at the top. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is put our wording at the top. And so I've created a stencil using my Silhouette Cameo because I have the machine at home to be able to print it out. If you don't have that, you can paint this by hand or even use white chalk markers to be able to do it with ease. I'm using white for my stencil portion at the top and then I'm going to do ombre for our handprints. I think it's gonna look really festive. I'm going to do a few coats because I want it to be nice, crisp white. Why do I always hold my pinky up when I'm sponging? <laughs> yeah, like I'm no. drinking tea, I always have my pinky up. <laughs> you fancy. I'm fancy. I really want the white to really like stand out over the stain color so that it's really crisp. Sometimes I like to have like the faded lettering, but on this provincial stain, I really want this piece to not be distressed. I want it to be nice and crisp. I think that should do it. So I'm gonna pull off my stencil now. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. This is always so rewarding. Yay! Oh, that's crisp. Nice and crisp. What I did was I took a base color of pink that I liked and I added some white to it and also some pink and I just made an ombre gradient scale of this color. So I'm going to add Dayton, Chase, mine, and Philip's hands to the board we did. <laughs> You're not allowed to laugh like I'm tickling with you in your hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Trying to go quick so you don't dry. Oh, I can feel it dry. I know, that's what I said when you were getting Extra, so. I should just stick my hand in that paint. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> what would stop me from just, you know, doing... Stop! <laughs> Gonna wreck my beautiful apron. I wouldn't dare. Cards can be very expensive, and so I wanted to do a card in this video. So project number two is creating a handmade card. I'm going to use some upcycled yarns and threads that I had that were donated, and some card stock that I got at a craft store. I got six of these cards for $1.50, so that's very, very budget friendly to be able to give multiple people cards out of one pack. 
So I'm actually being able to create six card gifts for only $1.50 plus tax. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to use a scrap piece of cardstock and create a template to trace of a heart that will fit on the front of my card. Bring back the old school heart making. <laughs> cut one and see if it fits on the front of my card. Oh, look at that, perfect. Okay, and then this is in a portrait style, so I also wanna make sure that if I decide to make them in landscape that it will fit, and it does. So I think that's my good template. So what I'm going to do now is with my pencil very lightly, I'm going to position my cardstock where I want it to go on my card. And using my pencil, I'm going to draw some dots evenly spaced all the way around my heart. This doesn't have to be perfect, just as close as you can visualize the spacing. And then I'm going to find the center point of my heart and make another dot. So that's what the front of my card looks like right now. And that's going to be our sewing template spot. I'm going to take my pins, my little top hole. I'm going to choose my pin that has the largest hole so that I can thread in some wider yarn. So I have a pin with a large hole in it, and I'm going to thread on some string that I'm going to use to be able to do the sewing on the front of my card. I don't know how much I'm gonna need, so <laughs> I'm gonna use extra and then use what's left over on the next card if I cut too much. Now to be able to thread it into the needle hole. So let's see if I can get this in. Starting from the middle dot, I'm going to stitch all the way across to each hole going back to the middle every single time. So I'm gonna start threading. And since my thread is very long to start, I'm going to take a minute. But I didn't exactly know how much string I would need to make it all the way around, so I'd rather have cut too long of a piece than too short. But I do think I'll need quite a bit of thread. Tie a little knot here and go to my top dot. And to be careful not to bend my card. <laughs> I'm going to do the same process all the way around my heart and use the process of editing to be able to magically put you at the end. My cards turned out really cute. I'm gonna show you at the end. Let's get on with project number three. Photos are a great keepsake. And so for project number three, we're going to be using this upcycled gift box that we have, some cardstock and some uh, pictures that we have of our family. And so this would be a great idea to use 10 pictures maybe if you were married for 10 years or 10 years of a child's life and be able to do this as a keepsake memorabilia item that you can give as a small gift. The cost of this project is almost zero. Because I don't have any Bristol board, you know, the long sheets of paper, I'm going to tape together a few pieces of this cardstock. That way I have a long strip of paper. I think three will be good and I'm going to tape them together. Busted. <laughs> Measuring the width of my box, I'm going to create a long strip of the cardstock. Now looking at how wide my box is, I'm going to start accordioning my shape. Do the first one and I'm gonna test it and make sure that it fits in my box. Perfect. I'm gonna do the same thing, zigzagging all the way down. Now I have my accordion and what I'm going to do is take this bottom piece and tape it down into the bottom of the box. And then I'm going to take this part to the underside of the lid. But before I do that, I'm going to put my pictures, cut them into squares and adhere them onto my zigzag. That way when I put it into the box, I can accordion it back down and glue it into my, or tape it into my spots. And then when I open it up, you'll be able to accordion out all the pictures. So let's see if it works. I have to cut your head in half. <laughs> <laughs> To make this a little easier, I just cut a square that will actually fit right in each one. That way I know I can just cut around it for the photos. Oh, I've only lost an ear. <laughs> Project number four is the perfect planted pot kit that you could give someone as a gift. I've always told Philip not to buy me flowers because they're a waste of money and to get me planted pots instead because they last a lot longer. And so we're going to do some cute painted pots with some quotes on the front and I'm going to put some of my cacti in them. Oh, I painted the top and now I have an idea for the top so I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> I'm gonna just do the bottom. I don't think you got it that bad. No, just as I did it, I went, oh no, I have an idea. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm going to put a quote on the front of my pots now that they're dry. This one says, plant kindness and gather love. So I'm gonna put this one on and then I'm going to sponge it. I'm going to put one on each of the pots, pink and purple. I decided to put on each of the words individually. That way my image wasn't going to be in a U shape once I put it onto the rounded pot. This is my first time doing this, so lessons learned. <laughs> This project um, is something that I made for lots of different occasions and it's one of the staples that I have in my shop and that is different types of ways that you can hang photos. I don't personally love hanging pictures on the wall with glass on them because I like to switch the pictures out more often than you would if you needed to take the glass and the framing and matting and everything all apart. And so I really like to offer photo hanging boards where you can use different styles of boards to be able to hang photos in different ways. Usually with clips or the um, straight signs where you can hang the photos on the bottom. I have a video about that on my channel. So what I want to do is make one for this video where we're going to make a photo board with a quote on the bottom. We're going to glue our clip at the top to be able to hang pictures of different sizes. And then I'm going to add a frame to mine like I typically do for my business, but if you don't want to do your own framing, you could just paint the sides of your board the same color as whatever you do the front. In this case, mine would be white. How many letters are gonna be attached to me at the end? I'm trying to use these weeding tools so I don't lose my little push pins all the time because at least if I drop it, this is easier to see when it's on the floor. But I'm much more comfortable just using the pin. When I'm selling my photo boards, I put tons of different quotes along the bottom. And so because it's going to be Valentine's Day, I'm going to use a quote on this one that says, grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. I put a whole bunch of Valentine's Day SVGs on my Etsy shop that you can use as instant download. I'll put the link above for you. Make sure I don't miss any of my letters. blotting off any excess so that I don't get it on my board where I don't want it. And then lightly applying. If you want to see how I make my wood signs and how I get no bleeding, I have videos on my channel on how to make a wood sign and also how to get no bleeding when making your signs. Crisp. So crisp. <laughs> satisfying because it took a long time to figure out how to do it without getting the bleeding and after all the hard work you do making a sign you want your lettering to be perfect so once I finally figured out some of the tips that I have on my video of how to do it it was a game changer for that satisfaction when you peel it off it was less of like a hold your breath and see what happens to just like satisfying I'm going to add a frame to mine and then I'm going to apply my clip and then I'm going to reveal the five projects to you Are you ready to see how they all turned out? Project number one turned out so good. I love that we now have the handprints to have as a keepsake on our family wall. I really like how the ombre turned out. And I think that even though we don't have a lot of pink in our decor, I can find the perfect spot for this in our home. Project number two was saving money making your own homemade cards. And I love the way that the upcycled yarn and threads looked creating these cute hearts. I can't wait to put them in envelopes with beautiful notes inside. Project number three was a little storage accordion for your favorite photos. I think this is a super cute gift to be able to make with no cost at all. Project number four was these cute planted pods. I always am looking for excuses to add more plants to our home and what a nice gift with a sustainable plant. Let love grow. And this one says plant kindness and gather love. Project number five was our photo hangers and these have endless possibilities for quotes that you can put on the bottom. The dynamicness and versatility of this photo frame makes it so much easier to be able to change photos in and out. You could put a cute phrase on the bottom for a friend or even to have like you, me and the dogs. You can really put anything you want on the bottom, whatever quote suits you. I think these projects turned out so good and I'm really happy that I was able to spend approximately a dollar to $2 on each project. I used a little bit of leftover stain and paint in the shop, but even if you had to purchase a few small supplies like your paint and stain, you really are creating something in a really thrifted budget. I'm really happy with the way they turned out and I can't wait to make some of these for my friends and family. 
I was feeling very festive today in this video wearing my painting apron with the red and black. We have a new line of Alicia English words on our Etsy store. You can purchase Alicia English brushes, files for your projects, as well as our new collection of aprons. The best thing about these aprons is that they're very versatile and you know what? We're doing a giveaway. Our January giveaway is a painting apron from one of our new collection launches and we're going to be numbering and signing the back of our apron. If you want to be entered into this giveaway, you need to do the following. You need to subscribe to our channel and be part of our YouTube family, like this video, and leave a comment on this video, what was your favorite project, one, two, three, four, or five. So we wanna hear from you in the comment section. Don't miss your chance to win a painting apron. Our last two giveaways, our winners were Rihanna Hall Fitchman and Melissa Phillips. Rihanna won a Silhouette Cameo 3 and Melissa won a Silhouette Mint. So you too can win being part of our YouTube family. So make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you to everyone's support on our channel because it's because of all of your support that we're able to do giveaways like this and be able to help other families using some of the proceeds from our YouTube and Etsy shop. A portion of our aprons and paintbrushes is going to help families in need on our Etsy shop. You can see details from those listings on my shop. Should we tell them about next week's big idea? Uh, we can't tell them yet. Okay, the only hint I'm gonna tell you is that it's really big and it's gonna help a lot of people. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, make sure you hit like. Don't forget to enter into our giveaway. If you aren't already part of our YouTube family, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next project.